Mael, is, is, is he there? Yeah, hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Ah, great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much uh, for having me. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm joining you from London and I'm going to talk about uh, a few things. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to just uh, mention uh, the project uh, that I'm uh, representing called Lost in Europe. It's a cross-border mm -hmm. investigative journalism project uh, in the EU, which is looking at the disappearances of child migrants in the EU. I'm also a journalist who spent many years working covering this beat, uh, largely in Europe and in Africa. Uh, we know COVID-19 has exposed migrants as the most marginalized people in this pandemic. And the situation I will talk to you uh, mm -hmm. about is the situation in Europe, particularly in the Southern European countries, Italy, Greece, these are the entry points for migrants arriving in, in Europe from the Middle East, from Asia, and also from Africa. And then I will go into discussing how this media framing is having an impact on both migrants and also is actually a part of a long uh, standing uh, tropes and framing that has existed around migrants for many years, particularly in Europe, at least since the so-called migrant crisis of 2015. Um, I've been reporting uh, on this subject for the last couple of months and what I've covered, and I'll just mention a couple of the stories, uh, a story I did for the BBC, I looked at the situation for uh, migrants in uh, the African continent, looking at two key exit routes for migrants in Africa, which are the route from the Horn of Africa into the Middle East via Yemen and the route from Libya into Southern Europe, usually ending up in Sicily. Um, what we have seen is that over the last few months, since this global pandemic has spread, thousands of migrants are stuck in transit, they're stuck in ports, they're unable to leave, they're unable to move, they're unable to go back home because the world has come to a standstill because of COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this has left a situation where thousands of migrants have been exploited. Give an example, the situation for Ethiopian migrants uh, who usually leave in their thousands from their country, which is landlocked in the Horn of Africa, and mm -hmm. usually go on foot uh, through the Horn route via Somalia and via Djibouti. Hundreds are stuck. The IOM has been reporting cases of hundreds of Ethiopians stuck, unable to move, being exploited, facing stigma and discrimination. We have also seen the situation in the other key exit point from Africa, which is Libya and the conditions that are happening there in the detention centers in which migrants have been held in, many of which are supported through EU uh, programs and financing. We have the situation in Libya, which has been worsening for many years because of the civil war the country is in. And yet there are thousands of migrants that are stuck in, in those conditions. In Greece, um, the government just announced two days ago that they're going to extend the lockdown uh, of 120,000 migrants in camps. I was in Greece last year and the situation is pretty bad usually. And now because of COVID-19, the situation for migrants uh, and refugees in Greece has become intolerable and desperately sad. And the Greek government is led by a right-wing reactionary party that has used this opportunity to really spread its own agenda. Uh, Italy, for example, has given amnesty for 200,000 migrants. You may think that's a good thing, but the reality has been very different on the ground, which is actually that it hasn't worked. Uh, the other aspect of this crisis uh, that we have seen in Europe, particularly, is that COVID-19 has presented states an opportunity to enact border policies. So uh, look at Austria. Austria has used this opportunity to effectively suspend the right to asylum using the threat of COVID-19 uh, as justification. And in fact, the United uh, Nations Refugee Agency says that of the 167 countries that have fully or partially closed their borders to deal with coronavirus, 57 have not made an exception for those seeking asylum. And we know that COVID-19, as I said at the beginning, has exposed migrants as being the most marginalized people, but also it's given states a perfect opportunity, such as Austria to enact border policies that they had long wanted to using the guise of COVID-19 to enact such policies. In Saudi Arabia, 
thousands of Ethiopians have been put on cargo planes and literally shipped into, the, into Ethiopia, left with nothing. Uh, we see the situation in Sicily, in the south of Italy, where I spent many years reporting from, where hundreds of Nigerian girls uh, who have been held um, in witchcraft uh, bonds um, by traffickers are having a horrendous time, unable to leave, unable to seek support. We have a situation for migrant workers right across the EU, which the situation has become particularly intolerable from Spain to Italy, where basically the whole agricultural industry in the EU is basically done at the hands of migrant labor. In South Africa, we have seen the situation where uh, the South African government has used this opportunity to build a border fence with Zimbabwe. So all across the world, we see that COVID-19 has given a perfect opportunity for states to enact these policies which target migrants. And I've got a few minutes and I'll come to the second part of what I was going to say. And before I do, I'd like to mention one important aspect of this, which hasn't been mentioned, which is the issue of remittance. Um, this has been a real issue for migrants, um, particularly in places like uh, the Middle East, wh where we know people from the subcontinent and other areas uh, in Asia, but also in Africa, many countries, for example, Somalia, um, you know, 40% of the country's population are reliant on remittances. And Somalis in Europe have been one of the hardest hit communities and I've done reporting on that in the UK. Um, so the media framing on this, well, you know, as I said, it, it, there's a long history of the way that the media has got migrant uh, coverage wrong and it's been reactionary and full of xenophobia. And it's been this sort of simple binary between good and bad migrants. And what COVID-19 has done is that it's really spread that process up. And one thing which is really key to this is disinformation, rumors, fake news. And COVID-19 has really allowed this to spread. And we see this on social media platforms, on WhatsApp, and we see how media, whether you're in Kenya, whether you're in Greece, in Italy, and if you're a media organization, often you have been guilty of spreading some of these rumors and fake news and myths. And, you know, framing migrants, as some have already said on the call, as carriers of the disease, and which has led to an increase in xenophobic attack and racism. There have been many instances, even most recently in Germany, the most recent outbreak um, of COVID-19 in Berlin has, you know, had is issues there where people have been saying in the media that migrants are using COVID-19 as an opportunity in Germany to riot. So again, we see how COVID-19 is giving this kind of reaction. And finally, um, what I wanted to mention is really what the impact of all of this might lead to, um, which is that I think COVID-19 could do serious long-term damage to migrant rights everywhere. We know the UN has already warned us about that. We know that the situation for migrants at borders, particularly those in transit is particularly terrible and that states uh, in Europe and in Africa uh, that I'm largely speaking from uh, have used this opportunity to shut down borders, to target migrants. And finally, you know, the issue of how migrants are represented and framed in the media. And I'd like to just briefly mention this book, um, which is called Lost in Media, uh, Migrant Perspectives in the Public Sphere, which is a, a collection of essays I co-edited published last year, which deals with this issue of the media and, and the way it frames, it's all free and available online, uh, but I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Smiley. Uh,